Hi! So today I wanted to show you how you can create a simple cellular automaton following the rule set of Conway's Game of Life inside the Go.game engine. To get started, let's create a tile map node, give it a tile set, go in there, and let's just use the go.icon as our tiles. I'm creating two tiles out of this, snap to grid. The first one, let's see. I'm going to make black because it has the ID 0, so we can just keep 0 to mean the tile is dead. And then I'm creating another one in the same space, and this one stays white, keeping the default color. Let's go into a folder for this, save it, and there we go. To be able to see things properly, I will add a camera to this, set it to current, attach a script to the tile map. And now we can get started with the code. These are all the nodes we are going to need. Right, first of all, let's remember what our tile size is. Our tile size is going to be 64 because that's the size of the go dot icon. And it's also the default size used by a tile map. So I don't have to change anything. Then we want to define how large our field is going to be. That is how many tiles we actually have to work with. So let's say export of type int var width and export of type int var height. Okay, now in the project settings what I'm working with here, window, is a window of 1920 by 1080 and while I'm at it I also defined a click event in the input map on the left mouse button and a toggle play button on the space button. I will be using these later. Now let's just set some number here, let's say 1920 divided by 10, uh, let's divide that by 2, say 1080 divided by 20 as well, there we go, that will make for a nice starting size. Now I suppose we should scale the camera so we can actually see everything properly based on the size we select in the export variables. So let's say var width in pixels is width times tile size, bar width in the uh, height, height in pixels is height times tile size. The camera is our camera 2D, why, uh, I forgot to put an equals, that's why it's not showing up. Now we wanna position this in location width height, divided by 2, so it's in the middle of the screen and not at the end of it. Now we still need to set a zoom on it, which is just with height again, in pixels of course, on both of these, very much pixels, divided by 1920 by 1080, our target resolution. And that should do for scaling it. Now let's play some actual tiles on our map. So 4x in range of width, for y in range of height, set cell x, y, 0. 0 is our black tile, we checked that at the start. So everything should be black now. And there it is. Since the go dot icon has some empty space in the corners, we can actually see a bit of a grid here. I want to keep that, I actually quite like it. It's nice to see exactly where my tiles are. Now, a few things to deal with input. First of all, Let's make sure we can tell if the game is currently playing. The game of life shouldn't always be processing. I want to be able to place things on the field without everything processing at the same time. So we set playing equals false by default. And while we're at it, I'm also going to create a temporary field, which can be used to hold the state of our field in between while we are trying to change it. That way the previous state isn't going to interfere with stuff when we are trying to update things. To make that work, let's add temp field here and just set some default values in there. So whenever we go here, let's create a temporary variable, which is another list. And for each y we add a value to that. The actual value doesn't matter, so I'm just appending 1 all the time. Or I could just append 0 all the time, it, it really makes no difference. It's gonna get overwritten soon, anyways. Append that entire list to temp field, and then our field is now 
set based on whatever sizes we have here. So func input event. What input events can we possibly have here? The two input events I'm going to define are if event dot is action pressed toggle play. In this case, we just say playing equals not play. Simple. The other one is if we actually want to place a tile somewhere. If event dot is action pressed, click. Okay, this is, the screen's a bit annoying. I'm just gonna make some space here. Var pause equals get local mouse position divided by tile size. So we are scaling our position by the tile size. Uh, that's supposed to be caps. That's why it's complaining. And this vector is going to give us some weird decimal places. We don't want that, so let's just take the floor function to make sure we get an integer integer position out of there. That way it's going to be compatible with the tile map. So on the tile map we can just say now set cell v pos one minus get cell v pos. So since our values are just one and zero, that means one minus one is going to be zero, one minus zero is going to be one. So this just turns around or flips our value from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. Just a short way of writing it. And yeah, let's actually take a look at that if everything's working so far. Yep, I can place these. And wherever I click with my mouse, these appear or disappear again. Easy. So now we want to actually be able to process what's happening. So let's make an update function for that. Update field and we can call that in process. No, I don't really care much about delta right now. I'm just going to call update field directly. The only reason I'm putting that into a separate function is so you can adjust it more easily if you want to only update every so many frames or something like that instead of updating all the time. So now let's see. First of all, if we're not playing, we don't do anything. So let's just say if not playing return. I could just say if playing and then do everything else, but that would mean we have to indent. And it's simple enough like this. So now we want to adjust the position. Let's see, adjust date in temp field. Yeah, let's do that. The temp field variable we created up here currently just has a zero in every single slot, but we want to update that whenever the field needs to be updated. So what we can do is 4x in range of width for y in range of height. Let's see, we want to count our live neighbors. So var live neighbors equals zero. Then we need to check all possible neighbors. So we have eight neighbors around us. So for x offset in minus one, zero, one. For y offset in minus one, zero, one. So we can see all possible tiles in the nine grid around us. So Minus one minus one is to the top left, then one one is to the bottom right, stuff like that. Uh, we gotta make sure not to have the option zero zero. So we can just say if x offset doesn't equal y offset, everything is fine. If x offset doesn't equal zero, everything is fine too. Otherwise we do nothing. Now we need to check if this cell is alive. If so, we can raise the live neighbors value. So if get cell x plus x offset, y plus y offset is equal to one, then this particular neighbor is alive. So we can say live neighbors plus equals one. It goes through all possible combinations. So this should be the total number of live neighbors at the end. This is capitalized, isn't it? There we go. So now that we know the amount of living neighbors for whichever cell we are currently looking at, let's figure out what to do with the current cell. So if the current cell is also alive, so if get cell x, y is equal to one, then there are two options. Either it survives, that's the case of live neighbors is either two or three. If it's one of these two, then we survive, in which case we can just say temp field x, y is equal to one again, as it was before. Otherwise, any other case we don't survive, temp field x, y becomes a zero now. So that's all cases for when the current cell is alive. If the current cell is dead, we can just check if live neighbors is equal to three. 
if we have exactly three neighbors, then we become alive. So then temp field x, y is gonna be equal to one. In any other cases, we remain dead. Temp field x, y is equal to zero. The reason I'm updating this thing even when the state doesn't actually change is because the previous state up here where is it? Up here isn't necessarily synchronized, so our next state would be based on that. We don't want that. So we just make sure to override every single one, and we don't have to worry about anything being desynced. So at this point, our temporary field is actually fully updated. It contains exactly the values we need. So now we just need to transfer these back to the tile map. So here we just update tile map. So we can just say for x in range of width once again, for y in range of height, set cell x, y, temp field x, y. So the location gets the same value. Anything on our tile map gets the value of our temp field. Since the 0 and 1 line up fine, that should do. Let's give it a shot. And there we go, that's working fine. This one shouldn't change, there we go. If I place anything now, it's not going to turn up because it just disappears right away. But if I place something right next to here, you can see it does affect things. Oh, that's a nice one. And it flies off. So yeah, that's how you can build Conway's Game of Life or similar cellular automata inside the Go.game engine. This will be all for today. Bye.